Well, good morning, everyone. I'm so pleased to be here today uh, with Parliamentary Secretary R.J. Sigurdsson uh, and everyone else at Stonegate EMS Station today to announce supports for EMS in Budget 2023. And I, I want to start off by thanking all paramedics and EMS staff here and across the entire province for answering Albertans' calls for medical help each and every day. I know this is a challenging time for our frontline workers. Emergency call volumes over the past two years have reached up to 30% above pre-pandemic levels. And I know this has taken a toll on you and EMS workers everywhere in our province. I understand you need to know more is being done to relieve some of the pressures you are facing. We have heard you loud and clear. You are tired and overextended and need to see change. And we owe you more than just our gratitude. We owe it to you and all Albertans to make things better. And we are taking steps towards that change, but there is much more to do. And I'm pleased to say that budget 2023 will help us deliver on much needed solutions. We are investing more money than ever in emergency medical services and putting more resources on the front lines Budget 2023 provides $196 million increase over the next three years to add more paramedics across the province and improve response times. This year alone, we are spending $740 million on the EMS operating budget. This works out to a 23% increase for EMS compared to last year. And that's on top of $15 million over three years to purchase new ambulances and upgrade equipment as part of a new AHS capital program. This new funding supports the solutions we need to increase the number of ambulances available so help can arrive sooner when Albertans call 911. We're adding more frontline paramedics, more dispatchers, and creating a dedicated system for non-emergency interfacility transfers. We started the EMS 811 Shared Response Program to free up paramedics to respond to more urgent calls. There's more money to hire more staff, more ambulances, and new programs to create more capacity in the system, especially during peak hours. Many of these solutions were brought forward by frontline workers and key EMS partners who know firsthand what needs to change and how to fix the system. The bottom line is we made a commitment to our EMS workers and to the rest of Albertans to deliver the care they need when and where they need it. All of these new commitments are building on the foundation we've already laid. We promised that help is on the way through our health care action plan. That plan outlines the tasks that we have given to Dr. John Cowell, the official administrator at AHS, to improve the health care system immediately. And one of these four goals to the plan is to improve EMS response times, and it details how we intend to accomplish this. The 90-day update we gave last month showed we are making progress on all areas, especially in EMS. Ambulances responded faster to the most urgent calls in the last few months. And we've seen a dramatic drop in the number of red alerts in Calgary and in Edmonton. And we are making progress on the recommendations from the EMS Provincial Advisory Committee and the EMS Dispatch Report. Of the 53 recommendations from the APEC report, 30 actions are underway and many more will be implemented in the next 90 days. I expect that all recommendations will be completed by next March. But there is more we are doing to improve our system and make frontline workers' jobs better. AHS has put in a 45-minute handover target in emergency departments. This reduces the amount of time EMS workers spend in the hospital and gets ambulances back into the community sooner. We're working to make sure paramedics can get off work on time so they can spend more time with their loved ones. AHS is buying power load systems and power stretchers for the provincial EMS fleet to reduce the physical demand frontline workers face. These initiatives, and many more, are starting to move the needle, 
but we can't stop working now. Changes that are being made today are all working together to lift up the entire system and give more Albertans better experiences in their healthcare system. So my message to paramedics and all Albertans today is we are listening. And budget 2023 gives us more tools we need to make further improvements and get the EMS system to where it needs to be. We are building a stronger, publicly funded health system with better access to care for Albertans now and for the years to come. And I will keep you updated with the progress we are making in the weeks ahead. So thank you once again to all of our paramedics and our other frontline healthcare workers for everything that you do day in and day out to support the health of Albertans. And now I will turn things over to the Parliamentary Secretary for EMS Reform, my friend and colleague, and the uh, co-chair of, uh, of APEC, uh, RJ Sergitson. RJ. Well, thank you, Minister. And just before I begin today, I would as well like to express my deepest gratitude for our frontline workers and everything that they do every day protecting our communities. As most of you know, improving emergency medical services is of the utmost importance to me, even before taking on the role of Parliamentary Secretary. Part of my work was co-chairing the Alberta Emergency Medical Services Provincial Advisory Committee. And during that time, I had the honour of working with 30 key EMS partners, as well as hearing from 1,400 frontline workers. As a result, the committee put forward 53 recommendations focusing on areas of performance, accountability, capacity, operations, efficiencies, and workforce. The main goal of all of these actions is to improve EMS for both Albertans calling EMS and frontline workers who respond to the calls. Alberta's government accepted all of the recommendations and some are well underway right now. Budget 2023 delivers on our promise to frontline workers and EMS partners to continue implementing the remaining committee recommendations. We are providing about 90 million to do so. Improving work culture is a top priority right now. And budget 2023 includes funding to improve scheduling practices to allow for more breaks, more flexibility in the lengths of shifts and opportunities to take time off for frontline workers. That's in addition to investing in more training and development opportunities for those workers. These actions will help easing the stress on our overworked EMS workforce. I'm also happy to share that to increase the pool of available EMS workers, Minister Copping has just approved a three-year exemption in the ground ambulance regulation to help ease staffing requirements. The exemption allows two emergency medical responders to respond to and transfer patients without the need for a higher level paramedic when medically suitable, freeing other paramedics to respond to more urgent calls. An EMR can also join an advanced care and primary care paramedic to respond to urgent calls. Frontline workers have also told us there is a need for more regular, sustained and effective mental health check-ins and supports for existing staff. To help meet this need, the government is putting nearly $1 million towards boosting mental health supports for EMS staff across the province. Budget 2023 invests in more EMS supports in rural communities as well. HS EMS Hours of Work initiative will be expanded to boost mental health supports for EMS staff across the province. This will address paramedics fatigue in rural communities by adjusting work hours and shift schedules and developing solutions on the local level. We are also providing more supports for medical first responders by adding more capacity and additional training and equipment. Medical first responders are often the first to arrive for a medical emergency in rural and remote communities. They provide life-saving care until an ambulance arrives. This year's budget also provides needed dollars to implement committee recommendations that address issues medical first responders have raised. 
As Parliamentary Secretary of EMS Reform, I will keep the line of communications open with our EMS partners and our frontline workers. Together, we will continue the work to improve EMS response times and the work environment across the province. Thank you, and I will now turn it over to Marty Scott with AHS. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Copping. Parliamentary Secretary Sigurdsson. One moment. It's great to be here today. I would like to take a moment and recognize and thank the many people who work within the EMS system in Alberta. No matter your role, every single one of you help keep Alberta communities safe. And we see this commitment every day through frontline paramedics, professional staff, emergency communications officers, and our leaders. I also want to recognize the significant contribution made to our system through our service delivery partners across the province, as well as our partners in medical first response. As the Minister has noted, this funding commitment will help EMS improve response times. It will help ensure Albertans receive emergency, response, emergency care where they need it. And this budget is enabling two of AHS's four priorities, and we'll use it to ensure EMS staff have the support and resources they need to be the best for Albertans each and every day, enable further recruitment, putting more boots on the ground, and to bring the best care to Albertans, fund more vehicles and resources needed to deliver on innovative ideas that help address response times and ambulance availability. AHS is working closely with Parliamentary Secretary Sigurdsson, the Department of Health and Service Partners to implement these recommendations from several reports. Of the 53 Alberta EMS Provincial Advisory Committee recommendations, 30 are underway and they'll be completed by this time next year. In addition, 21 recommendations from the review of EMS Dispatch are also underway. As I mentioned and alluded to, progress has been made on many of these recommendations, including establishment of the EMS 811 shared response model that provides triage of low acuity patients and system navigation to other appropriate healthcare services, freeing up our ambulances to respond to life-threatening emergencies. Focusing on supporting paramedics to end their shift on time while also improving workplace and providing culture, cultural and mental health supports. Working with our service partners to equip every ambulance in the province with a power load, power stretcher to improve the workplace for all paramedics across the province. And we continue our work with our service partners in Spruce Grove and Sherwood Park on pilot projects to help maximize utilization of EMS resources and to maintain resources in communities where they are needed. The EMS Return to Service Initiative is a great example of actions AHS is taking to reduce response times in metro and surrounding communities. And it also helps us achieve two recommendations from the Alberta EMS Provincial Advisory Committee, which were to focus on reducing hospital interval times and to establish a 45-minute target. My colleague Matt will be up here shortly to provide a bit more information about the impacts of that initiative in Calgary. The additional $196 million in funding over the next three years is key to implementing all of these recommendations. We are at heart at work and we look forward to continuing that significant work to make these important changes to the system. With that, I'll ask Matt to come up and say a few words about the impacts of this work in Calgary. Thanks, Marty. Pardon my voice, I'm a little bit hoarse, but we'll do our best here. Um, the funding will impact delivery of EMS services across the province by helping get ambulances back into the communities where they're needed. A lot of work is underway. As a frontline paramedic supervisor, I am seeing firsthand the impact of this work by the decreased time I'm having to spend in the emergency departments. The Return to Service initiative includes EMS and the emergency departments working together to get paramedics out of the EDs faster back into the community sooner so the same ambulances are available to respond to emergency events. This has been a team effort. It has taken the collective efforts of the sites, frontline clinical teams, and EMS to pull this off. Calgary was first to implement this work. The aim was to bring EMS hospital wait times in line with the 45 minute benchmark used in other provinces. <clears throat> Pardon me. I would like to stress 45 minutes is a target and not a mandate. At the end of the day, it's ensuring safe flow and safe transition of patients from EMS to the department. 
the Calgary Zone went live with this on March 15th of 2023. It's early, but the initiative along with the team efforts are already resulting in an increase in available EMS units uh, able to respond to emergency events. These benefits have also extended beyond the Calgary city limits. We're seeing a reduced need for surrounding communities to provide coverage for the city. And as such, there's been an improvement in coverage in those surrounding communities. As I touched on before, this is not only emergency departments and EMS response times. This is about supporting patient movement through the ED into acute care beds and ultimately to discharge from hospital back into the community. First hand, I have seen the collaboration in motion. I want EMS staff, along with the site teams, to know how much we all appreciate the hard work that they're doing. We're excited about these early results. I look forward to many more initiatives made possible, <coughs> pardon me, <laughs> made possible by the added funding so we can continue to deliver high quality care to all of Burton's. Thank you. Announcement. Um, we'll go right into media question and answer. Uh, we'll start at the microphone here in the room if you have any questions. Uh, state your name and outlet. Um, we'll try and keep on topic questions first and see if we can get to the other ones afterwards. Um, one question, one follow up. Uh, Aaron Jews of Live Wire Calgary. Question for the Minister. Minister, of the $196 million, how much is that is going to Calgary and how many extra paramedics is going to be added to the Calgary uh, uh, pool from that? Yeah, I'm going to have to get back to you on the specific numbers for the Calgary. Uh, it, it, this will actually be increasing um, paramedics across the province with a particular focus in uh, uh, Calgary, Edmonton, uh, Lethbridge and Red Deer because there's a, additional uh, dollars uh, and then staff associated with that. But in terms of the specifics on, on dollars in Calgary, we're going to have to get back to you on that unless... Um, do you have any uh, any of the details there, Marty? On the, Yeah, we're going to have to get back to you on that one. Yeah. Uh, follow up here. Uh, in terms of the hiring timeline and then the purchasing timeline for the various accoutrements for the uh, the ambulances, what what's timeline on that? Yeah, so so we are looking. Thanks very much. Uh, Austin Lee, CTV News. Um, also for you, Minister, just your thoughts on uh, over the weekend, that decision to stop screening for uh, COVID-19 at AHS sites. What went into that uh, decision and, uh, and yeah, just the timing? Yeah, so, so we, you know, we are moving into an endemic phase. Um, you know, we recognize that, uh, um, you know, as we do this to sort of treat uh, COVID like other respiratory uh, respiratory viruses. Uh, so this assessment was done by by AHS in terms of the need to do the, the, the screening. Um, their assessment was that it's not required at this point in time. Now still, you know, the policy still is in places of people coming in to to, uh, uh, to mask, but that is that is under review uh, as well. Uh, but it, but again, it was a recognition that, you know, we are into an endemic phase. You know, we have, uh, we're not quite out of uh, the respiratory virus season yet, uh, but typically, you know, at uh, by this time of year, in terms of the spring, it it uh, it dies down, uh, and there's a recognition that the resources that we have, that, you know, have that are doing the screening, uh, we can better apply those resources uh, and manage the risk in the hospitals, provide services to Albertans. And that ties in nicely to my follow-up. I was just going to ask about how much, uh, it might be difficult to quantify, but how much that helps in, in freeing up resources in, uh, in healthcare, not having to do the screening. Yeah, it, it, there's going to be like there, there. You know, screening was being done uh, on an ongoing basis in in, uh, in facilities. So there is a, and I don't have the exact number, but there's quite a number of staff associated with that. So that will be helpful. But again, like anything else, you know, AHS, you know, sort of manages where where's the best deployment of the staff to be able to provide the services at this point in time. It's not doing the screening. It's actually in the hospital, and and that will uh, continue to help us deliver services for Albertans. Thank you. Thanks. All right, uh, we'll go to our first caller on the phones. Operator, if you want to put through the first reporter. Catherine Gregowski, Alberta Today. 
Yeah, good morning. Um, so part of meeting this 45-minute target was a plan to hire 114 full-time equivalent nurses and 127 allied health professionals who will be on these um, transition teams. Uh, where are we at with teams in place? Yeah, so the, we, we actually... Teams in place. Yeah, so the, we, we actually have um, hired a number of them, and it's being rolled out in stages. Uh, so Calgary was a place that we started first, so we have the most number hired here. Uh, my understanding, we haven't completed all the hiring, but it's and, uh, and we just rolled out um, in uh, Edmonton zone uh, last week, sort of the, uh, the start, uh, and they're further ahead in the, in the hiring process. So um, my understanding is that we, we, we have a, you know, in Calgary, um, I think just over half, but uh, Marty, can you comment further on the, the numbers? Okay, we'll have to follow up the exact numbers, but my understanding is just over half on the, on the Calgary in terms of the hiring and in place. Uh, we continue to do that, but, but again, um, we are ensuring that, you know, as we add the additional resources, uh, that any of the handoffs are being done in a, in, you know, uh, and the safety of the, uh, the patient is of, of primary importance. Uh, we actually are having success right now um, it's only been two weeks, so it's early, uh, early, um, early days. Uh, but my understanding, we are having success in terms of, you know, getting the uh, uh, the um, uh, the vans out and and, and within that, um, you know, target of uh, 45 minutes uh, much of the time. But we still have more hiring to do here in Calgary and across the province. Okay. Catherine, do you have a follow up? Yeah, I guess um, it's it's been kind of hard to hire throughout the entire system. Where where are these nurses and other allied health professionals coming from? So my understanding, it's it's a combination of uh, you know within the system, uh, new grads uh, outside the province and, and outside the country. And, you know we are also focusing on you know streamlining the process for international uh, international trained uh, nurses and other allied health professionals. Uh, AHS is apparently a surplus in paramedics, uh, so they're, they're target in Australia. So the target, I don't know actually how many specifically have arrived here yet. Uh, you know from that initiative, but uh, we are uh, attracting. Uh, uh, new staff and, and we are actually you know growing our overall workforce and we do have net new all right thank you um we have time for one more question uh operator can put through our last caller bill kaufman post media yes hi uh, i'm just wondering where we are in terms of numbers in um reducing wait times do you have any numbers uh, pertaining to you know improvements to you know, redu reducing red alerts. Um, where are they now compared to where they were, say, a year ago? Yeah. So, so you know, as we mentioned in the 90-day report, you know, significant, and this was as of the 90-day report was as of uh, data in uh, in January. You know, a significant reduction uh, in the uh, in red alerts. Uh, my understanding is those numbers are continuing to uh, to go down. And also, if we look at the actual response times, um, you know, we are making uh, progress across the province at the uh, at the uh, 90th percentile. Uh, and it's not only in Calgary and, and Edmonton. Um, but Marty, if you want to speak to you know maybe talk the the most recent numbers uh, that you may have available. But if not, uh, if you need us anecdotal, we we I, I will tell you that all the numbers that we we actually have put out are on the website. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the response time, so you can actually uh, look at them there. But Marty, if you want to comment, even if it's just from a uh, um, from anecdotal of what you're seeing, particularly the results from the uh, return to service initiative. Yeah, the most recent uh, response time numbers we have were in the health care action report, 90-day uh, report, in the action plan 90-day report. Um, just um, we know those numbers anecdotally are going to go down as we go forward with the return to service initiative. Um, we were speaking earlier, and, and um, there's quite a lot of variation in our numbers as we've implemented. We're only 15 days in, but we've seen days uh, where our response times are actually below our historic pandemic levels of response, and then we see times where they go back up over the last 15 days. So again, we're, we're working to understand what those are, uh, but those are the impacts that we're seeing from return to service in, in Calgary. Uh, we rolled out return to service initiative in Medicine Hat in Red Deer last week. Next week, we'll roll out the return to service initiative in Edmonton. 
and the following week, which I believe is the 19th, we'll be rolling out the Return to Service initiative in Lethbridge and in Grand Prairie, which will mark a full implementation to the targeted sites across the province. So that will, uh, based on our early experiences in Calgary, that will have a significant impact on uh, EMS response times across the province. Thanks, Marty. Bill, do you have a follow-up? Yeah, um, any idea? I, I'm not sure if you've, if you've answered this question already, uh, the, the feed cut out on the Alberta.ca for a bit there, but um, do you have any idea when uh, that 45-minute target will be, will be reached, like, you know, comprehensively reached? No, sorry, Minister, I'll just top in on that one. I'm standing here. Uh, what I would say, just to reiterate, that the 45-minute the uh, target is simply a target. And the target is there to help us all understand um, where we can improve and how we can push ourselves in order to meet those, those offloads. So I would say we don't have a target for the target, but what we do know is that the more we work on this, using that 45 minutes as a guide, uh, as I just mentioned, we are definitely improving response times and performance of the system. Well, thanks, so that. And the, and the last uh, just follow up on that is that, you know, as, uh, as Marty indicated, we are um, focusing on rolling this out uh, over the course of the, uh, really into, uh, into April, sort of the next four weeks. Uh, and then we'll be able to uh, report back out on terms of how it's doing. But then after that, you know, like give us another couple of weeks and we'll have a, f you know, a full month of uh, data in Calgary. But the, again, anecdotally, uh, it, it appears to be uh, to uh, making a, a, a significant difference. Uh, but, you know, it's not just, that's just one initiative of many. Uh, and part of Budget 2023 is be able to fund, you know, the... Uh, the, uh, the recommendations made by APEC uh, and the dispatch report to be able to ensure uh, we get those times down uh, and we keep them down. Thank you very much and thank you to everyone who joined us today and that concludes our announcement.